Hey guys, this is the Lenovo Duet, a $200 Chromebook with a detachable keyboard. But what stood out to me is that this device has received a lot of positive reviews. So naturally, I wanted to check it out. It's my first time using this form factor, and I wanted to see how I can incorporate it into my workflow. Welcome back to Reviews for Life. Let's begin. Inside the box, you get a lot of accessories. But what stood out to me is the device itself, specifically the screen and the security updates, which are good until 2028. The tablet itself is very light at one pound, which is about the same weight as an iPad Air. Looking around, there's the volume rocker and a power button with a single USB-C connector underneath. Along the bottom, there's connectors for the keyboard and nothing along the far side. At the top, there's two microphones and two speakers. There's also two cameras, with the front centered at the top and the rear at the back. Here's a few sample images in different lighting conditions. And here's the same images blown up at 100%. So this is a quick test of the front camera in a poorly lit situation. There's a bunch of noise around my face and in the background. And here's a sample of a much better lit area. The microphone does pick up a lot of noise, so you'll want to work in a really quiet environment. Moving on to accessories, the kickstand is made out of plastic and has a fabric covering. It's connected magnetically and is quite secure. With typical use, it's certainly not going to come apart. However, the trade-off to the kickstand is that it adds some bulk, both in terms of weight and in thickness. Moving on to the keyboard cover, it magnetically attaches to the base and doubles as a screen protector when closed. The screen does turn on and off when you open and close it, but there's no magnets to help keep the cover closed. The hinge is made out of flexible plastic, so the lapability is not ideal. This causes the keyboard to rotate relative to the screen, and it makes it feel unstable. Compared to a full-size keyboard, all the keys are slightly shrunk. But luckily, since the keyboard is optional, you can simply detach it and connect a full-size keyboard. As for connectivity, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth both work well. I've been using a Bluetooth mouse, keyboard, and headphones all at the same time, and really haven't noticed any issues. The tablet does have a single USB port though, which means that you'll need to get a dongle or dock to take full advantage. The port can be used to charge phones and is able to support external displays up to 1080p at 30Hz. If you buy an adapter with Display Link, the device is capable of powering two 1080p monitors at 60Hz. Note, this is different from DisplayPort, so make sure not to confuse the two. These adapters run for about $50 to $150. And in case you lose or break the included audio adapter, you'll have to buy one from the Lenovo store since third-party adapters are not supported. In terms of performance, I was pleasantly surprised. Running multiple tabs with YouTube in the background is not a problem. When I added Zoom to the list, browsing did feel a little slower, but it's still very usable. One place I did notice a performance hit was when I tried playing Slither.io. There was significant lag to the point where the game felt unplayable. Hearthstone is better optimized, and so the experience is more enjoyable. It's only available on full screen though, so you'll have to alt-tab if you want to multitask. These tests show that the device is very capable when browsing static content and can handle games that don't require much real-time interaction. A key benefit of the apps is the offline mode. For YouTube, this means I could download videos like monitor reviews to watch later. This app is optimized for touch, and everything feels fast and intuitive. The trade-off is that once you connect a keyboard and mouse, things like hover support aren't supported well, so it doesn't quite feel the same as browser versions. Testing productivity apps like Google Docs, everything is fast and responsive. Checking for the hovering issue, the mouse cursor does change, but doesn't bring up any of the tooltips that you expect to see. This is okay if you know what the icons mean, but can cause confusion if it's your first time using the app. It's also missing click and drag to highlight. In general, the apps work well for tablet mode, but don't feel as polished when using a mouse and keyboard. If you're looking for video chat apps like Meet or Zoom, they aren't available in the Play Store, but can be accessed through the browser. 
One of the exciting features about Chrome OS is the Linux support. Things do get a bit more technical here, so skip on ahead if this doesn't apply to you. Enabling Linux is pretty straightforward. Just toggle a button in the settings and let it download and install. It's a Debian virtual machine with a command line interface. In the settings menu, you can customize disk allocation and resource sharing, such as microphones and external storage. Now, if you want to install programs, they must support ARM, since this is an ARM device. I tried installing GIMP and it works. However, there's limited functionality because pressure sensitivity is not supported. For coding, G++ and Python 3 come pre-installed. Node can be installed via apt-get. And for editors, Vim comes pre-installed, but I couldn't install Sublime. Other tools like SSH works well. IDEs such as Visual Studio Code also works pretty well. To me, this is huge because it means I can code on the go and hopefully there's more apps that will support ARM down the line. Now, this tablet is marketed towards students, and from my own experience, they're pretty rough with electronics. It does come with one year warranty from Lenovo, and as for replacement parts, a screen costs about $70, and for batteries, well, I wasn't able to find any. So after using this device for about two months, my impressions are as follows. It's hard to beat the value for $200, especially since Lenovo has included a kickstand and a keyboard. Security updates are good until 2028. Performance is great if you limit the usage to static content through the Chrome browser. Tablet mode provides an enjoyable user experience since most apps are optimized for touch. If you want to work offline, Native apps like YouTube and Docs allow you to download your content before disconnecting. As for the cons, the single USB port means you have to buy dongles or Docs if you want to take full advantage of it. These additional accessories can quickly drive up the total cost to a mid-range laptop. The Chromebook lags when doing anything in real time, even in the Chrome browser. Games can be playable depending on how well it's optimized but don't expect to multitask at the same time. The included keyboard works in a pinch, but isn't very good for prolonged use. Linux is available, but not all the programs feel fully fleshed out. Hopefully, as ARM architecture becomes more popular, this will change. Replacement parts can also be hard to source, so it's not very DIY friendly. Overall, the Lenovo Duet is targeted towards people who want a portable device at an affordable price. Honestly, I was initially very disappointed because I thought this device would replace my four-year-old laptop. But once I stopped treating it as a laptop and more like a tablet, it grew on me. The performance, small form factor, and lack of available ports were no longer issues when I was just using it as a web terminal. Personally, I recommend it if you're looking for a portable entertainment device that can sometimes do work. The only direct competitor I can think of is the ASUS CT100 Chromebook. All right, that's it from me. If you've enjoyed this content, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.